Here's my concern on the whole question of the, the EFE. Um, the, um, we know that there's no funding in FY 2012. Um, the, um, both you and the Secretary have reaffirmed the requirement to conduct amphibious, amphibious assault missions. Um, and you intend to develop, as you were just describing, something else. But the, um, as, the, as the Secretary was giving us the answer of his cuts when he announced that there was going to be a cut with this, this vehicle, um, he says the most plausible scenarios requiring power projections from the sea could be handled through a mix of existing air and sea systems employed in new ways along with new vehicles, scenarios that do not require the exquisite features of the EFV. Can you describe the analytical work Secretary Gates is referring to his, in his statement? And was there a report done? And, and the FV, also, it's my understanding that there were there's a cessation of uh, the testing phase. And I'm a little worried about our ability to, um, to mine or ascertain the, the innovations uh, with respect to the vehicle. Um, if I could have your thoughts. Sir, on your, on your last point. Uh, uh, the acquisition decision memorandum was released about uh, two or three uh, weeks ago, uh, giving 60 days for the Secretary of the Navy to, uh, and the Department to take a look at uh, how to, uh, how to uh, shut down the current EFV line. Uh, the, the forecast is, is to take the, the best of what's left in the testing for this year, for this fiscal year, and continue on with that. Those decisions are working through right now. So what you'll do is you'll capitalize between now and the end of this year, the end of the contract, uh, on those things that are probably going to be the most fruit-bearing as it relates to the EFV. The whole concept is to take those, those technologies, those lessons learned, and then apply them to the amphibious combat vehicle. So that the shutdown of the line is, 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 is in work right now, uh, but it'll be done uh, uh, from my words, it will be done focused on those things that it ought to be focused on. Um, as it relates to the EFV and the elegance of the EFV, when those requirements were developed two and a half decades ago, uh, we looked at the threat and said it's 25 miles, that's about the farthest the naval vessel will have to go over the horizon to be able to be out of harm's way. Well, we know that that's not the case today. The enemy's not gotten any easier, he's only gotten more lethal. So as a superpower nation, we can either decide we're going to abrogate all that space, the sea space, and get out a thousand miles, or we can take the technologies and capabilities we have that we know we have right now and integrate them in the joint force and allow the naval vessels to come in to be able to disembark their Marines in, 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 in the new amphibious combat vehicle. That's, that's the difference uh, between the requirements as the way they were viewed in the 80s and the requirements as the way they're being viewed in 2011.